What's up guys, this is Hardy from Digital Painting Studio. World building can seem like one of the most daunting tasks that a concept artist can tackle. Just the name alone, it makes this sound impossible. World building. And that's probably why I avoided environment art altogether for many years. It just seemed like it's way too much to process, just too much to design and invent. And I was just utterly mystified by anyone who could do this. Today, this is one of my favorite things to do professionally. And even seemingly highly complex environments like the detailed cyberpunk cityscape painting going on here, they're not nearly as time consuming or tedious to design and render as you might think. Uh, not as bad as I feared they were years ago. So for this video, let's talk about some key ingredients for world building. This is some stuff that helped turn this into this task that seemed impossible into something that I could just approach with steps, kind of break it down into a formula. So what goals do we need to target? How do we achieve these? And at the end of the video, I'm going to link a tutorial kit if you want to use the actual tools that I'm using and try something like this for yourself. Okay, key ingredient number one is depth. Exterior environment art like this cityscape, it needs to feel authentically huge and expansive. We want to be able to see things that are just miles and miles away, but also the ground at our feet. So for this painting, I eventually want to see everything from like cracks in the sidewalk in the extreme foreground all the way to these massive mega towers looming in the distance. And that impression that we are in this large space, that's really the first box that we need to check. That's kind of step one in the formula. Show things that are near and show things that are far. And that impression of depth, I, I, it's hard to describe, but it's just magic somehow. It's the first step in making your world feel real. Like there's an authentic space here. You know, we could go explore those faraway places. We can see it creates this feeling that you're making a painting that you could kind of walk out into. Really powerful. And I'm sure that you've all heard of awesome ways to create illusions of depth in 2D painting. So like linear perspective, that really cool use of vanishing points to make everything feel three-dimensional like they exist in 3D space. But the perspective concept that really changed everything for me in environment art is atmospheric perspective. I absolutely love this and it's this deceptively simple concept. Basically, make stuff get lighter the farther away it gets. That's kind of it. And I am really leaning on this concept, even in the shape sketch phase at the very beginning. So the, it's like these blocks of buildings get just a notch lighter in value every time we step back farther into the distance. So near is dark, far is light. Or more accurately, the object should get closer to the color of the sky, to the actual atmosphere the farther away it is. So that's why this dark value biker silhouette in the foreground, she seems close enough to have a conversation with, but the lighter value mega tower off in the distance feels like it's miles away. And because of that, it makes it seem massive, like impossibly huge, hundreds of stories tall. It's that value information, that simple use of atmospheric perspective that creates that effect really convincingly. It's like it, it gives the air substance. It makes the whole world feel three-dimensional. And surprisingly, it is really not that hard to use. So that feeling of depth and hugeness, 
is the first way you can really grab your viewers' attention. Let's make them feel like they are in a real space, somewhere huge that they can explore. Key ingredient number two is life. We want the worlds that we create to feel alive. And weirdly, this makes environment art circle back to being mostly all about people. Kind of counterintuitive, but this is actually really great. It gives us all of these fun opportunities to make these very human connections that can really draw your viewer in. So. Every detail, every design language and shape choice, every architectural style, uh, the technological level that we're showing, especially in this painting, all of that comes back to describing the people who live in this world. So for this one, obviously really technologically advanced. We have buildings that are impossibly tall. We have tons of signs and billboards just aggressively selling us stuff, just overstimulation, overload. We have wires crisscrossing everywhere, kind of like the whole world is trying to steal power from one another. And all of that comes together to paint this cool, gritty, cyberpunk theme of a world that has all of this bright, dazzling technology but that's just there to contrast with human misery, just astonishing wealth disparity between the punks living in the gutter and the corpo overlords living in their towers looming above way off in the distance. My goal is to communicate all of that with the buildings alone. Now, I will include some foreground characters, but other than that, all of that information about the people the society, the humanity of this world, it really gets carried by the environment itself. Trent Kiniuga, who is an art YouTuber that all artists should subscribe to, he has this really awesome video on this subject. He designs a pair of kind of Hobbit style houses. They're really beautiful paintings, really nice designs. But what I love about the video is how Trent describes the buildings in terms of the people who live there. So what are their needs? What is the main threat that they defend against? What does the craftsmanship and the architecture of their buildings tell you about their culture and their values? It's this really great reminder to approach world building and environment art from that angle of people. Even if there isn't a single character present in the image, we need to feel that human presence to what makes our worlds feel alive. The final thought that I'll leave you with today is the one that will give your world lasting appeal, and that is storytelling. So if we create a world that feels authentically big and expansive, item one, and feels alive, item two, so what? I mean, that's cool, but it's kind of, it's the setup so that we can deliver cool stories. It all comes to this. I'm doing that most directly here with a pair of characters, but to go back to my previous point, it doesn't have to overtly show people in order to tell a really human story. So we could show a totally empty post-apocalyptic city with ruined buildings, just bomb shots and everything. That tells a story, like what happened here? We could show a tree that fell on a house in a storm. Things like that make your viewer want to know what happens next. It's just something to draw them in. It makes your image end with a question mark, something to want your viewer to see what happens next. In this one, I'm going for this movie poster style, tragic cyberpunk love story. It's this really film noir moment where 
I don't know, maybe these two people have this one last chance to get out of the city. Will it work out? You know, can they be happy together? Or will the city just keep dragging them down? It's this really human moment that we can all kind of relate to, and it's super overly dramatic and sappy, and I love it. So make worlds that tell stories, really directly or even indirectly. So every light in a window, every puff of smoke coming out of a chimney, every dimly lit alley or storefront, all of it implies a life and a story. So fill your worlds with side quests. Invite your viewer in to explore and kind of get lost in your imagination. I hope those perspectives are helpful. I really love this one, and it was actually not nearly as complex to pull off as it might seem. So if you want to try something like this, I've put together a project kit. It has a full-length step-by-step tutorial and all of the custom shapes and brushes that I use. So this is a really great one-off if you want to quickly pick up some new techniques and add a shiny new portfolio piece. So be sure to check that out. I've got more of these kits on the way. Take care, guys. I'll be back next week. In the meantime, good luck with your artwork. Paint something cool today.